Excellent. And we'll talk about Metasploit framework. Got some new modules, uh, including a new LibreOffice module from our own Shelby Pace that can gain Python code execution on vulnerable versions of the software via the Libre logo scripting logic. I'll actually show a demo of this in just a minute here. And technically this next module wasn't in the release we cut last week, but it is available in master and it will be in the release this week. Last year, a backdoor was added to the Webmin system administration software hosted on SourceForge, allowing attackers arbitrary code execution as root. Yeah, it's about as bad as it sounds. After this backdoor recently came to light, our own William Boo created a new module for exploiting vulnerable versions of the software. I'll also show a demo of this. And we've got some other interesting work going on. Let's talk about some enhancements. Contributor B. Coles updated the Linux hash dump gather module. So now it supports pulling former passwords from the target's Etsy security O password file. We've also had a few updates to the RDP library and framework. Contributor C. Noten added TLS 1.0 support, which enables compatibility with older versions of Windows. And contributor Zero Steiner added the ability to fingerprint an RDP service using Windows Credential Security Support Provider, or CRED SSP, and updated the RDP scanner aux module to use this new logic. That's pretty cool. Contributor Hoodie added some tests around Juniper configuration parsing, and he also fixed some bugs he encountered while doing that, which is great. And our own WVU improved the user experience when an attempt is made to exploit with an invalid R host value. So now it prints a clear error message instead of a less clear backtrace like those things. And some bug fixes. Our own Mkino added a fix to the Metasploit RPC logic so that it now supports multiple simultaneous console instances. And Egypt swung by with a couple of fixes himself. One for HTTPS redirect from an HTTP URL in the HTTP client library. And another fix for a missed instance and module author of the full name changes that came with the module aliasing feature earlier this summer. So I appreciate those. Our own WV restored the dash O behavior in Metasploit 4 uh, for specifying payload options with the MSF console generate command. So now the generate command with the dash O acts like it did in Metasploit 4. And our own B Waters fixed a recently introduced issue with post modules that use file, file dropper where a missing needs cleanup attribute was leading to a crash. On recent framework activity via our weekly Metasploit wrap up blog posts at blog.rapid7.com. And a huge thanks to all who helped make Metasploit better through their contributions. Thank you. All right, how about a demo? Let's see here. So uh, this is the module that Shelby wrote up. Uh, I'm going to switch my share here and instead share my desktop. Okay. So let's see, I've got a VM uh, of Ubuntu 1804 that happens to have a vulnerable version of LibreOffice installed. And I've got my framework over here uh, ready to, to exploit it. Give you a little background. LibreOffice has a feature where documents can specify that pre-installed scripts can be executed on various document events, such as mouse over, for example. LibreOffice is typically also bundled with LibreLogo, a programmable turtle vector graphics script, which can be manipulated into executing arbitrary Python commands. Probably see where this is going. By using the document event feature to trigger LibreLogo to execute Python contained within a document, a malicious document could be constructed which would execute arbitrary Python commands silently without warning. This module generates an ODT file with a global DOM loaded event that, when triggered, will execute any arbitrary Python code and the Metasploit payload. LibreLogo executes the Python code stored in the text part of the document. So we'll start here at our standard uh, MSF console prompt. Let's say, I want to use the LibreOffice module. I don't know which one, help me out here. I'll make the window a little bigger so it doesn't wrap. And I can see that IS, uh, the LibreOffice Libre logo is the one I want. And that's number one over here. So I'll say use one, yay. Um, at this point, I need to specify my L host and R host options. So I am L host. Actually, sorry, just, I just need to specify L host and uh, local port options. Now, at this point, we're ready to run and it's going to generate ODT file. At this point, it's on us to figure out how to get this onto the, the target system. Uh, you know, email it to somebody, whatnot. In this case, I just to 
for expediency, I just used SCP. Yeah. Um, and I'll log into my VM here. So with the copy of the uh, file over here that has our manipulation in it, you know, the, the target opens the file, LibreOffice ah, crashes unexpectedly. Did it actually create a session? Oh, I need to set my, I didn't, I didn't get my listener. Whoops, all right. This is, one moment please. Uh, I hate it when this happens. Your call is important to us. Your call is important to us. Please wait. There's some hold music here. Uh, let's set the payload. Uh, oh, I'll host. I'll host again. Use the global setting. Okay. So don't send. Try that again. Let's see, it opened up at this point. And hey, look at that. What? Yeah. Hey. So at this point, we have an interpreter session um, onto our target. So that's all very exciting. This exploit does work across a number of operating systems. You can check out the module documentation and get an idea about which versions of LibreOffice are, are vulnerable and which operating systems we've tested them against. Uh, includes Windows and Mac OS, fun stuff. Uh, I hear that the word on the street is that maybe Libre logo may not be packaged in more recent versions of LibreOffice. So that might make this a little harder to exploit on some of the newer versions, if that's the case. Is there any way to customize what's in the document? Yeah, you can edit it directly and kind of save it again. Well, yep, yep. All right, and then on to our, our demo of Webmin. So, Let's use our use command. Say, I want to. I want to use a webmin module, but I don't remember the whole thing. Aha! Number three is our Huckleberry. That's our webmin backdoor module. So in this case, I'll click back over here in our vulnerable VM. Close that. Uh, close LibreOffice. So the. Uh, well, okay, it's not responding. Just works quit. Um, this is included in the module docs, so you can, the, the vulnerable versions that still have the, the backdoor in them are still available on SourceForge. Uh, so I just, I just went and, got and grabbed one of those for this purpose. And you can see it running here on my system. This is the, the UI for Webmin standard dashboard running. Yay. Nothing too crazy. So in this case, we set our, our hosts to point to our Vulnerable instance. And oh, I need to set L host again. I just need to use the G and stop stop frustrating everybody. And in this case, in this case now, uh, we've taken advantage of the backdoor, which the backdoor itself is a parameter called old that is used in a call to the password change CGI for command injection. And at this point, we can say, uh, where am I? I am root. Oh, wow, there you go. So that's kind of uh, exciting. Uh, that's, that's the Webmin backdoor in a nutshell. Uh, any questions about either of these uh, modules? That one came from our own William Vu. Do you have any idea how many vulnerable Webmin instances there are out there? I do not. Okay. I did not. I did not stumble across anything. Webmin has like a nice little write up, but it's not very. It's basically about you know, don't use the older version. <laughs> it doesn't really talk about numbers. But the, the um, vulnerable versions are still on source boards as of today. Absolutely. It's absolutely. very interesting that they leave them up for download. Yeah, absolutely, not. and they may still be referenced uh, as official download sites from the Webmin site itself. Um, they they had been anyway. Uh, so. Okay. Very interesting. Probably a number of instances out there. I wouldn't discount it. Yeah. Excellent.